Okay. Yeah. Good morning. Welcome, everybody. Uh, thank you for joining um, this week. I know it is the Holy Week, and uh, maybe some of our students, uh, for some reason, they are unable to connect. But thank you for joining in. We will pray, and we will. Um, uh, once again, get into our study about the apostolic. So either one, Atitarun or Abhishek, could you please lead in prayer? Anyone? Okay, I'll pray. Uh, Father, thank you, Lord. Thank you for this time that where we could come together and study, Father, as we uh, do this, uh, we pray for your leading. Uh, supernatural understanding of uh, uh, what we are uh, listening to father we pray that uh, uh, you speak through pastor nancy uh, as we uh, spend this uh, hour uh, studying lord we thank you and we ask this in jesus name amen amen thank you thank you darun for praying um so, so far, we have been trying to understand the features of the apostolic and uh, understand how the apostolic will look in our modern or current times. And, you know, we, we have the features in mind now. And therefore, it will be easier to talk about, you know, how these can be applied through a local church, how this can be applied in a city, how it can be applied uh, when it comes to discipling a nation. So that was the whole intention of us laying the scriptural foundation and then, you know, building on that uh, and be able to recognize how the apostolic really um, uh, looks as far as the church level is concerned, the city level is concerned, the national level is concerned. So today, what I'm uh, intending to do is uh, to go over the remaining chapters in our, in our portions here, starting from chapter 5 all the way till chapter 10. Um, so, you know, there... We have discussed all the features, uh, and so uh, I don't think I have to dwell too much on explaining each point that is written out in these chapters. You already understand. So uh, I just have to summarize each one of these chapters. So let me see if at all, you know, I can go over all the chapters today. And if I can, then this would be your last class. Uh, and also just to... Uh, inform all of us. The assignments have already been posted and many of you would have noticed uh, compared to last year, I made it very simple. The first two assignments are uh, in the form of a Google form. So there's not so much of uh, uh, writing, elaborate writing required. If you have understood the uh, teaching so far, then it will be easy for you to just answer the questions. Many of them are in the form of multiple choice, true or false. Uh, the reason I did this is because I wanted your uh, tests to be in sync with the e-learning portal students as well. So uh, that is the reason. But the third assignment, it's more of a writing assignment because uh, it, that also is something which is very important, you know, the skill of being able to understand and explain. So the third assignment uh, is a, a slightly lengthier one. Uh, please take some time. And again, you know, though it, it is about writing uh, and um, sharing your understanding, uh, it is not very tough. And that, that's what I think. I've asked you two simple questions. So, you know, you can definitely spend time, study further and answer those questions. Uh, and we should be done with uh, the assignments as well. Okay, so let's dive uh, right into chapter 5 here. So this talks about the apostolic ministry and the local church. So basically what is um, shared here is the fact that um, as we see the apostolic un anointing unfold, churches will look more like, um, you know, it, it's more of a team ministry. So we are familiar with a pastor establishing a local church and the church growing and becoming a large church and the pastor themselves uh, being the prominent leader of that congregation. Uh, and, you know, similar churches uh, start 
um, being established in the city and then there are lots of churches so that is something that we are all familiar with but when we talk about the apostolic ministry in and through the local church it will look slightly different what we will have is a model like the Antioch church. You know, the Antioch church in Acts 11 is a church which was planted by some believers. When the uh, leaders of Jerusalem hear about this church, they send certain you know, people with, with certain caliber to uh, the Antioch church. So then you start having leaders uh, who have come down from Jerusalem minister to the Antioch church. So, you know, you, you have Barnabas and then Silas. All these people come and then they start to impart. Okay, you also have Paul. So they begin to impart. So they have teachers now in the, in the church. And so you would read the names of certain teachers in the Antioch church and the ministry goes on in that way. But then if you also begin to have prophets. Okay, so uh, the fivefold ministry offices uh, try to begin to take shape in the Antioch church. So what is happening is uh, it's moving away from having one particular prominent leader and only that leader to having a team. So there is a team, a fully functional, um, you know, uh, like a team which also has diversity in it. So you have somebody who's a prophet, someone who's a teacher, somebody who's an apostle. So you have that kind of a multi-functional, if you want to call it, team. And they're all ministering to impart to the church. And as you keep you know, looking at uh, the Antioch church from uh, chapter 13, it becomes a sending out base. Because you have uh, Paul and Barnabas who go out of Antioch to do the ministry and impact other places. So then this remains as a base church. They keep coming back to the Antioch church. You know, they go on their missionary journey. They come back. They report to the believers and they continue to have believers who pray for them and, um, you know, so, sort of excuse me, support them in the ministry. So that is the model. So when we talk about the local church becoming more apostolic, this is what we uh, will see. We will see team ministry. We will also see uh, the, um, uh, gr the grooming, the rising of strong leaders, many strong leaders. Uh, we will see uh, the people of the church stepping out on ministry. That also uh, is something. So it's, it's more of an outward focused church as compared to uh, the, the usual church that we understand um, you know a church where there's a lot of inward care which is not wrong we definitely need people to be cared for and people to be taught the word of God but you know once as people are growing there's a stretching that that comes about in an apostolic church where people are encouraged to share what they have learned people are encouraged to step out uh, if they are called to um, uh, the the ministries which which have to do with the four walls of the church, then yeah, they're teaching, they're preaching, they're uh, prophesying, they're, uh, uh, you know, evangelizing, they're, they're doing a lot of that. But if they're called as um, um, apostolic believers in other areas, then you would see them making an impact for the gospel in their professional lives. So you would have uh, uh, somebody who is part of politics, you know, making a difference for God, bringing, um, uh, upholding the standards of God's word uh, in, in things out there. So, you know, uh, stuff like that. Or somebody who is um, in media, uh, they are upholding God's standards in that field. And maybe you have, uh, you know, great <laughs> films with the... Um, uh, uh, good morals in them uh, which is which blesses the society which disciples the society um, uh, you know and and better standards and entertainment so in these ways as well you have more apostolic believers rise up from an apostolic church so that would be the difference what is the regular uh, way of doing church preach grow as a body uh, continue to teach god's people impart to them so that that would be the normal way. But the apostolic way is to, to nurture the believers to maturity as well as missions. 
that is the difference between a, a regular way of doing church and the apostolic way of doing church. So what are we saying? We're saying that we will see more of such churches rising up. So are there uh, such churches right now? Yes, there are many churches in you know many parts of the uh, globe. Mm, some uh, notable names would be you know New Frontiers. They have uh, a movement like this where they have uh, churches that they plant across the globe. Uh, and I think uh, Calvary Chapel that also is is a mm, uh, church movement and a set of churches that continue to plant many churches so similarly if you uh, look up there are uh, several such churches even locally um, uh, i'm sure there, there are churches but maybe it's not written about uh, on the internet but the the sense of stepping out the sense of making an impact the sense of um, you know working together uh, as a multifunctional team, it is beginning to take shape because there is an anointing that God is pouring out on the body of Christ. And that's what we'll ex expect. Okay, So that would be an apostolic church. Uh, so um, again, notice that the pastoral leadership looks very different from an apostolic leadership. So what will apostles in the local church uh, do? They will father the church. It's it's uh, more than just growing the church. They will father the church. Reason being, we need to groom many leaders. And for that, fathering is required. So then when they are fathering the church, there will be many leaders who will emerge. Uh, and, and therefore, you will have a strong leadership uh, in the in the local church. Remember, we talked about the strength of a local church. The strength of a local church is one of the important keys is strong leadership. When we have uh, many strong leaders, we can expect the church to be a strong church. So an apostolic church will be a strong church because there will be lots of people who are well-trained, well-equipped with a vision, working together, uh, strengthening the local body. Okay, so uh, these are features of an apostolic church, strong leadership. Um, then uh, we we will see governmental responsibility. Now, governmental responsibility is governing. We uh, would uh, have an emphasis on governing right, governing well. So apostolic churches usually have their um, policies in place. They have their way of doing things in order. Uh, and that is helpful because then you know you you know what kind of leadership you're expecting, and also as the church, um, the churches uh, multiply. There there can be many churches that arise out of this one base church, uh, and, and that's how you know the Antioch church was. The Antioch church was making a huge difference in the region, and people were going out of the Antioch church and doing their ministry. So. Eventually, we can expect many new churches to be planted. So the missionaries that went out of uh, Antioch Church, Paul, Barnabas, what, what happened? They were um, preaching the gospel. There were new set of believers in uh, other cities. And you know they those groups of believers then became the new churches. So uh, governing, I'm talking about you know government what how did they how did they oversee these churches? They never left the churches okay, once the uh, believers once there are believers in a new place this is the feature you know, governmental responsibility what is governmental responsibility you know you don't just let go uh, if you do a crusade and let's say a thousand people have accepted christ the apostolic will take responsibility now the apostolic will think okay how can we ensure that these believers continue to grow, they mature in God, they embrace their calling, they walk in their calling, you know, they accomplish great things. So that is the apostolic way of thinking. You know, just the evangelistic way of thinking could be, I'm not, you know, I'm not trying to put it down, but uh, just for us to understand the difference. Okay, lots of people are saved. Wonderful. Let's do a crusade in another place. What happens to these thousand people who have already accepted Christ? So the apostolic way of thinking is, okay, they need churches now. Can we start a church? Or can, where can these thousand people go? Can we ensure in some way 
that their information is given out to good local churches in the city and they are planted in that church how can we work with the pastors you know so the apostolic is looking at ensuring proper uh, uh, order so there is governance in that sense now let's say that uh, this particular uh, group apostolic group they went they preached they did a crusade thousand people are born again and uh, there are no local churches uh, yet in in that particular region so most likely they will plant a church now once the church is planted what happened you know paul and barnabas they went on their trips so they kept going to new cities and then they came back to these cities on their you know way back to antioch because they want to make sure that the church is really growing so this is governance this is governmental authority when something goes wrong remember the whole circumcision issue this they just jumped into the issue and they rectified it so this is governance to just have believers and you know let them go that's not governance but the apostolic is about governance we want to make sure these churches are okay they are doing things in line with god's word that uh, believers are maturing okay so so you understand that is the difference uh, just a pastoral way of doing things will not ensure all of this but an apostolic way of doing things will ensure and you need lots of people to be able to govern you know uh, 10 churches 20 churches 50 churches 100 churches how are you going to govern we need the principles in place we need the processes in place we need lots and lots of uh, leaders uh, okay so that's how the apostolic will work so apostolic will provide strong leadership governmental responsibility so now we have an idea of what that really means then doctrine is very important and particularly when we are talking about multiplying if the doctrine is not clear what could happen the danger is every offshoot you know is going its own way if you we have 10 uh, local churches and no clear doctrine they are not established in the doctrine we don't have a way of you know having the doctrine put down maybe in written or uh, you know it's it's recorded there's no clarity so eventually you know how how do you ensure that everyone is learning god's word rightly it's difficult it's very very difficult but this is a feature of the apostolic doctrine is important so the apostolic leader will make sure that the doctrine is taught rightly and it continues to be taught rightly so whatever it takes for that to happen uh, and thankfully you know we live in a day and an age where uh, we have media we have website we have you know youtube we have so many things google drive the transfer of information the creation of content it's it's just at an incredible speed you know it's going on and from what we hear about knowledge it's multiplying initially earlier it was multiplying you know every whatever 50 years every 10 years every 5 years now it's multiplying every year you know every minute you see that the the amount of content that is created that goes up that can be recorded is it's just um amazing so all the more we can function well in the apostolic in the day and time that we live in right now so what will the apostolic do establish doctrine um call out if someone is going away straying away from the doctrine and you know we have all this communication zoom and a google classroom we can meet uh, we have our outreach pastors call since the lockdown happened we are having we have a a call on which we we um not just have teaching but we also have a time of interaction sharing so they share what's going on it's so much easier to keep in touch now than ever before okay so governance responsibility doctrine uh, so the apostolic will move in that direction then establish order within the local church how do you establish order one is doctrine the other is the way the leadership um, is positioned and the way the church functions uh, we've learned so much about all, uh, all of this in house of god uh, so appointing leaders 
And you notice this in the way Paul and Barnabas function. They appoint leaders. Um, even before Paul uh, knows that you know he's going into Jerusalem, there's going to be trouble for him. He will be tried, and then you know he will uh, be. Um, he, he will even have to die for the gospel. He talks to the leaders of the church of Ephesus, and you know he shares his heart and you see his love for the leaders. So there are a set of leaders. They are well equipped, well trained. And uh, he talks to them about, you know, the dangers that could happen, uh, what is expected of them. So there is an order and he tells them, keep doing this. Come on, keep doing this. Do it well. He writes to Timothy. He tells him, okay, when you appoint leaders, you make sure that these are the qualities of the leaders. So you see Everything is handed down in such a proper and an organized way that the next set of leaders know exactly what to expect. Now, of course, you know, God does much more with every generation. So that the freedom for that is there. But the basics, the core, uh, the, uh, you know, the, the primary order is in place and the apostolic is one which will establish it within the local church. So you know, there, there will be leaders, they will take care and all of that. Okay, so they'll, it will establish an order. Uh, then develop new wine skin, God's order and structure for the local church. It simply means uh, uh, a better way, a better way of doing things. When we talked about the kingdom of God, the house of God, we said that the content doesn't change. Our content is always the word of God. And, um, you know, our message is always Jesus. Our method is always in the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, those are core elements which should not be touched or tampered with. So we understand that. But what is the new wineskin? New wineskin simply means a new way of doing church, a new way of sharing the gospel. So if you just go back to the way church has been happening, uh, you know, you will recognize once a uh, church was institutionalized, it was all way too formal uh, and, you know, there was laity, there was clergy. But as uh, we, we saw, you know, God working in, in the body of Christ, uh, there is a newer way. There uh, started to be life groups or some people call them cell groups. This concept wasn't there earlier. But yeah, now people are open to that. Music in church. You know, earlier, maybe people felt that you shouldn't be using certain instruments. Uh, but people are more open now. You know, about, okay, fine, it's okay to sing in this way or to have these instruments. Uh, the church format, you know, the way churches used to happen earlier. Maybe now the newer churches, they understand you have a different crowd. Okay, let's limit the church service to, let's say, about an hour and a half or two hours and have it very structured uh, where, you know, we have our announcements, we have time in the word, we have time in worship. Uh, so they plan it out. So what's happening? New wine skin, new ways of doing things. How does a church service feel now? Earlier, people were very restricted. Oh, it, it has to have a steeple and it has to, you know, have all that uh, ancient uh, uh, paint, uh, stained glass paintings and things. But eventually, people were like, hey, we can't afford it, but we have to um, do these church services. How about we just have it in a hall? And now people have auditoriums, you know, they have AC auditoriums. So new wine skin. In, in various ways, you know, I, I don't think I'll be able to enlist everything to you, but just letting you know that things are being done differently now, uh, which is okay, as long as we don't compromise on the core um, of what we believe and what, uh, how we should do things. So the mission, we don't want to change that. The standards, we don't want to tamper with that. But the audience is... Mm, uh, you know, the, the way the audience receives the message is changing. So, you know, people are more open. People are more open to a new way of doing church life groups. And, you know, now uh, recently I was uh, hearing someone talk about teenagers and uh, how the, their attention span is so short. Now, if the only way that we want to reach them is to tell them, hey, you got to be in church for an hour and a half and listen, listen, you know, give your attention. They may try, but 
you know, that might not be the most effective way. So someone was saying, hey, how about using gaming? How about using, um, you know, features like that? Because a more interactive way of ministering to teenagers. So what are all the things that we can come up with? New wine skin. So the church becoming open to uh, different ways of doing the same thing but doing it more effectively. So that, that is what we're seeing. So uh, there'll be a new wineskin, but a note that the apostolic will establish order and structure in the local church so that the, the important things are not meddled with. Then uh, it'll help to pioneer um, new works outside, new works outside. So you know, I, I think we, we get it by now. Uh, there are all these new fields. Uh, I, I just told about uh, uh, teenagers. Uh, counseling. Counseling is another area. We live in a world, uh, particularly post-COVID, with uh, newer mental, is mental health issues. So why should we, as the church, not bring the kingdom to people who are going through issues like this. So I, I know that at APC, uh, there is something going on with regard to uh, mental health and, you know, uh, counseling. So you know, they're working on, on a new way of doing things and uh, a new project. So why can't the church do that? That's pioneering. Right? Doing something new is pioneering, breaking new ground. So the apostolic will lead us into new things. How about you know, online Bible college um, and uh, making it global. We, like when I joined APC as staff, I was only familiar with, you know, going into a class and teaching a, a class, which is um, uh, students from all over the country come and you should do it that way. So when this happened, you know, online Bible college happened, eventually, initially, we did it for our regular students. So we needed to complete their semester. Uh, so that was also comfortable because we knew we, we had, we were working with the same students. But when the new semester started, and pastor announced, he said, Hey, we're gonna do this, we're gonna open it up to the world. It was so scary. We were like, Oh, please, you know, we're feeling stretched. But that is the apostolic. It will call you to new things. And uh, it's exciting, but it can also be, uh, you know, we have to adapt soon. We also have to have an open mind to doing things. And, of course, it's going to be a lot of hard work. So the apostolic is like that. It will call us to pioneer new works outside. So isn't it enough that we're doing our local church mm processes here in Bangalore, our, our Sunday services are running well, we have member care, we keep in touch with our members, uh, you know, we, we uh, are thinking of new ways in which we can evangelize here in Bangalore city, that's local church, that's a pastoral way of doing things. But what is the apostolic doing beyond that, beyond that, okay, we're sitting here, and midweek, you know, here is a great chance to impart something globally. Who would have thought of that? But you see, the apostolic anointing is like that. It'll move us into um, uh, various various uh, arenas to impact the global body of Christ. So when you look at an apostle or an apostolic leader uh, or an apostolic church, the apostolic church will be concerned about the body of Christ. How can we get the word out there? How can we disciple people faster? How can we evangelize people faster? You know, so how can we equip faster? And what's going to come out of it? So you're, you're thinking way beyond that, you know, maybe a hall that we have and uh, a set of 100 believers whom we are pastoring, which is important. We will not neglect that. But at the same time, God is calling us to new things. God is calling us to pioneer great things for his kingdom. And the, the uh, options are many. Uh, the world out there is exciting. You know, so it's it's really, um, uh, what can I say? Uh, I, I think exciting is, is the only word I can think of right now. So the apostolic is very, very ex exciting. Okay, so we can do so many new things for God. And uh, it, it also... When you look back, you, you just wonder, God, in my own understanding, I could never have done it. But uh, thank you.
thank you for you know giving me an open mind to try this and you know there you are making a, a bigger difference and touching more lives for god's glory so that is the apostolic church uh, and i think you know we have a very good idea now okay. i'll i'll keep moving on if at all you have a question then you please stop me okay now moving on to apostolic ministry and the city how would it look um, similar very similar to what i talked about right now the apostolic uh, leaders of the city have a heart for the city okay so uh, we would see that local churches will unite their if obviously they they are all separate as as local churches and an entity by themselves have their own call have their own direction vision the way they do things so that will remain the same but there will be a heart for the city so the local leaders the strong apostolic leaders they sort of come together they think together they uh you know discuss together they uh, come up with uh, some direction together so when we talk about impact on a city unless this happens a unity of hearts and apostolic leaders it's very difficult no no one person can uh, take the city no no one uh, leader can take the city no one local church can take the city it's not going to happen for a city wide impact we need a city wide mission and that can only happen when leaders unite their hearts and they decide to serve together so there is a need for apostolic leaders in the city and unity of their hearts usually what do they do so this is this is how it will look they will they will come together firstly uh, and have a heart for the city then um, they will also begin to bring unity among the pastors leaders uh, the mission the missionaries you know the the um para church organizations so they will bring a sense of unity and not a sense of division they'll just you know bring out a call and say come on we all need to get together we all need to do something for the city let's meet often let's talk often let's build relationships so that is what the apostolic will do as far as making an impact on the city is concerned so bringing unity among churches and ministries in the city and also the apostolic leaders who provide leadership you know, they will be more like fathers or uh, yeah fathers is the right word fathers to uh, the ministries the leaders in the city so what what do they try to do they try to nurture them they try to stretch them they try to uh, you know bring them up higher give them a vision expand their vision and say oh it's great that you know your ministry is doing well it's great that your your church is doing well how about we all do something together for the city you know and a, a wonderful time uh, that uh, personally for me which impacted me a lot is the covid uh, second wave when um, uh, things were so bad and we would hear that uh, ngos and government organizations they are doing something for the people who are suffering all around us uh, but there was one call and i don't remember the exact date but i think it was roughly a year ago april end or may something early first week of may we had this call where uh, pastor was leading the call pastor ashish and he had invited uh, many leaders to join that call and i too was on that call and you know the pastors were discussing they were deliberating they were thinking about what can we do how can we as churches as christians as leaders do something do something for the people who are suffering and out of that came the uh, you know after that pastor shared with us uh, that the the plan would be the covid relief plan and you're all aware about it and uh, you know so he said okay apc will head it now we will provide um, the the support the manpower we we will do the stuff uh, and, and you know the other local churches can contribute into it so that's how the covid relief project began and what a difference it made and even today as i look back at those meetings it was more than just um you know it was more than just us working because we were talking to pastors who were struggling one particular pastor he wrote his testimony and he shared how uh, he had little children and one morning he woke up there was no milk to give his children 
because churches were not meeting. So there was no way of uh, an income for these pastors. Uh, so you, all that brought tears to our eyes. And we were hearing testimonies like this as we were doing the COVID relief project. And it really impacted me for one uh, to to see what can happen when God's people come together. So many people contributed, and they were not even uh, you know professionals. Uh, they were not even church folk, uh, as in they were not in the ministry. They were professional people, but you know they contributed uh, through finances, uh, though they could not give their time. And then there were you know churches that contributed. APC made a huge contribution, but this is apostolic. Apostolic says. Let's work together. Let's make a difference. You know, let's make an impact. So it'll draw the, the set of leaders to do new things, greater things. Think about city transformation. Okay? How can we have transformation in the city, spiritually, morally, um, uh, you know, in, in other ways? How can we bring about transformation? So the apostolic will work together with the leaders of the church and you know, cause all these things to happen in the city. Okay, represent the body of Christ toward government or local civic authorities. So I, I don't know uh, if you all are aware uh, that currently in, in our state, Karnataka, the, there is this whole thing about the anti-conversion bill, which is going to, which is uh, being, you know, it's going through its own process. Uh, but there have been many leaders who have come together and you know across denominations to discuss hey what is going to be the impact of this bill so what should the churches do what should christians do in the state of karnataka uh, and you know that again shows that it's so important no one local church can stand up you know for it, for uh, all the believers in the city it's going to take all of us to work together so the apostolic will encourage it will encourage unity it will uh, it will want the um, body of believers to uh, you know have a representation and this representation even with the government with the um, civic authorities and somebody to step up, somebody to speak for or, or on behalf of the citywide church. Uh, and, and so, you know, the apostolic will contribute into all of these things. Then influencing governmental regulatory policies. So I, I just gave you an example, and I think you can think of other examples. Even locally, you can think of uh, examples from uh, about, you know, from you, where you are from uh, and see how so far something like this could have happened and uh, even going forward you know how uh, leaders can impact government policies okay um, the apostolic will also have greater access will have greater access to uh, places and people of influence and obviously you know when there is that kind of a connectedness uh, it's a lot easier to uh, communicate with um, maybe government officials or some sort of movers and shakers in the field of media or sports or this and that and it's easier to to get things moving so the apostolic will do that causing movements at the grassroots level um which which simply means you know um uh all the activities that have to, have to do with uh, growth and increase we would see that Know, taking place and the apostolic will encourage that then execute god's plans and purpose for the city have an impact for social reformation so uh do we have great examples of this right now i think you know small examples here and there um are already there and also, like I feel personally that more people should write about it because I, as i look for content um uh, you know not too many people write about uh, city transformation, but I'm sure it's happening. It's happening and it's happening at uh, different levels. Uh, the one example which I gave us earlier was through prayer um, uh, in Kali, South America. There was this uh, transformation that took place because the citywide church came together in prayer uh, and you know there were um, examples of how the crime rate came down uh, there, there was drug trafficking and murders all of that is reduced in the city and you know there was greater unity among the churches so just one small example but you know i'm sure that there are so many more uh, that we must really 
be hearing about. Okay, uh, now uh, coming to impacting nations, the same thing. You just take it to the national level. So fathering, fathering leaders uh, across nations. So with the apostolic, uh, there are no boundaries, right? So it goes from being a citywide impact to a national impact to even a global impact. So I've always wondered when I uh, joined APC, uh, it's called All People's um, Church and World Outreach, APCWO. And I remember one of the first things I told a friend of mine is, it sounds very presumptuous to me to imagine that, you know, one local church, world outreach, or, you know, too ambitious world outreach back then. Uh, so I would always wonder, what is this? Why is the name? Why, why shouldn't it just be All People's Church Bangalore? All People's Church World Outreach. That is the organization, of course. Our, our local church is All People's Church Bangalore. But then, uh, as being part of the church, I've been observing and the apostolic anointing, it's its taking over, right? So there's, there's so many things. Then eventually the five branches of the church in Bangalore happened. And at the same time, simultaneously, the outreach churches uh, were planted and they were growing. Uh, and, you know, various ministries of the church, missions, pe sending people on missions, Bible college. And, you know, now it, it's scaling up at another level. What is all this? The apostolic. So as we go forward, we are going to see churches being led very differently. Not just pastoral leadership, which is good, which is more inward focus, but more apostolic leadership where, you know, we even impact nations, you know, uh, through uh, being directed by the Holy Spirit. So fathering leaders, across nations is it possible i think it's more possible now than ever before thanks to all the technology that we have and you know the, the easier way of doing things then birthing new movements again through the holy spirit through the anointing through the opportunities that we have very much possible across the globe very much possible releasing new strategies for the body of christ okay so yeah, new way of doing things. I talked about that power to change campaign. I never heard about something like that. So uh, power to change, you could look it up. There is this campaign where uh, every nation, they they choose cities and it's a strategic way, strategic way to share the gospel. So they pick a city and they do this uh, major project. They prepare six months prior, one year prior. Uh, and then uh, they take up like a, 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 a month and throughout that month there is uh, uh, like a multiple in, in multiple ways um, they share the gospel so there are some books they, they prepare they, those books are given out with testimonies of uh, notable people in that particular city um, and uh, you know all the churches of the lo uh, all the churches of the city are involved uh, the believers are uh, uh, you know trained to follow up with those who choose to read this book uh, and then people who commit their lives to christ there is some way of putting them connecting them back to the local churches so uh, it's a strategy now is it a perfect strategy you know we can talk all about it we can talk about the loopholes and the short uh, shortfalls and all but then you see i think that's how it gets better at least somebody had the courage to step out and do something new um, which makes a larger impact so we must not be scared when God gives us an idea or uh, he's moving us in a new direction, giving us a new strategy. Just go with the Holy Spirit. It may seem very big, but God has all the details. And you know, we press into uh, the ministry of the Spirit and we step out in these ways. And so we're really looking. And as we are, the times that we're living in now, we mustn't deny that we're so close. We're in the last of the last days and we're waiting for the return of our Lord Jesus Christ. And um, this is the time of the latter rain and the harvest. 
okay the bible talks about it the harvest of souls uh, a great and a mighty harvest of souls the, the this uh, message of the kingdom it will be preached across the world you know, many will hear it and we have to find ways to reach people um faster more effectively and not just about sharing and forgetting about them but the apostolic is about you know continuing to disciple them nurture them isn't that the great commission make disciples of all nations go into all the world make disciples of all nations and god is releasing that anointing at this time and uh, i just encourage all of us you know pray dream and say you know ask god god stretch me um and uh, god has something for all of us to do uh, as this this latter rain is being poured out or the outpouring of the holy spirit and the harvest is being um, you know brought into the kingdom of god before the lord jesus returns so so there will be a national impact uh, there will be um opening up of new regions territories impact national governmental authorities for the kingdom of god strengthen churches network of churches across the globe so i'm just going to stop here we have a really you know small chapters following but let's not rush we still have uh, it, some more classes so tomorrow there is no class but next thursday we will complete our portions for the apostolic and if you have any questions it will be we can have a good discussion as well so i'm just going to stop here any thoughts any comments any questions okay all right then we'll just wrap up for today then uh, we have another class to go uh, and i'm really hoping that we'll have some discussion in that class uh, before we complete our course so yeah your questions are out please uh, work on them and you have sufficient time to uh, you know uh, hand in your assignments as well all right let's let's pray and close anybody who is able to pray from where you are you could pray please I think saying anybody doesn't work. So, uh, Christopher, uh, are you comfortable to pray? Okay, I'm not sure if he's hearing me. Uh, Beth, can... uh, okay, Kennedy, I'll just check with Beth if at all she can pray. That would be nice. Okay, it's okay, okay. Yeah, if not, I, I'll come back to you. Okay, maybe maybe there's some difficulty. Okay, fine, Kennedy, please go ahead. Hello, Jehovah. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for the crew that we've learned. Thank you for everything that we've shared as a family and as a team. It's my prayer that we are going to give us the knowledge, the spirit of knowledge, wisdom, to implement it, Jehovah. Thank you. I commit everybody into thy hands, Jehovah, as we as we head towards the end of our classes. It's my prayer that all is going to be well with us. I commit our teacher, Madam Nancy, into thy hands, Jehovah, to bless her work, bless her, and give her more knowledge and more courage to do whatever she's doing in all her undertakings, Jehovah. I commit everybody into thy hands, Hoping that all is going to be well in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Kennedy. Thank you, everyone, for connecting. God bless you. Have a great week and a wonderful, um, you know, holy, holy weekend. Okay. See you all next Thursday. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you too. Thank you. Bye.